Good morning. Shall we do a coffee and cleaners? Let's do one a little different from my usual subject matter. You know me, I'm a built-in vacuum nut. But I've got a couple of books from none other than James Dyson. And uh, I thought those would be worth sharing. There's one book that Dyson wrote that I do not have uh, that now I think I should get and read called Against the Odds, his autobiography. So I don't, I don't have that to share with you. But the first one is A History of Great Inventions. This book you can buy and uh, it's just a fascinating look through the last few hundred years of well, even, no, going back even further than that to the not to the beginning of time, but just about. And uh, I, I won't go through the whole book, but it was interesting to me that Let's see, where was it? Okay, so 1945 to 2000. You know, think of all the things that have been invented in the last over 70 years. And it's that much of the book. There is so much from, from uh, prior history. Oh, there's the self-cleaning house, Francis Gabe. That's a neat story. I'm just kind of glossing through this to get to what I really want to share with you. And that is a book that you can't just buy unless you luck out and find one on eBay. And that's this. This is Doing a Dyson. And this came out in the mid-1990s. Interesting binding with these very Dyson-esque uh, fasteners here. I have some some uh, discoloration. I don't know where this came from on the cover, but th these are just clear sheets of vinyl. And this was limited distribution to Dyson employees, etc. Where was that serial number? This has a serial number tag, actually. Doing a Dyson. Designing, engineering, manufacturing, and marketing your own invention. Here it is. Okay, so this is book number 7943 out of a 10,000 book run. So this is the Dyson story as of 1996 with some now very very vintage looking photographs. It's funny that this doesn't go into any of the Dysons that were sold in the United States. Those came nearly 10 years later. So I received this book because my father, the patent attorney, had some business with a patent attorney in the UK that happened to be, or I don't know if that patent attorney was Dyson's patent attorney or if they worked with Dyson. I don't know. There was some connection and somehow he ended up with this book and my my dad talked about his son, the vacuum nut, and uh, this book made its way to me. Here's the the little drawing of James Dyson receiving his inspiration from a an industrial cyclone from a wood shop, 
and then here's the recreation of Mr. Dyson attempting to fit a smaller version of that cyclone onto a Hoover Jr. One of the UK's historically most common vacuum cleaners, the Hoover Jr. All these 10,000 prototypes. I don't aim to be clever, I aim to be dogged. One of the golden rules of development, you only make one change at a time between tests. That's true. When, you, when you're perfecting an idea, you think, well, we could do this, 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 and this differently, and then you build another model, and now you, you don't know which one of those things made the difference. Here's a graph showing the dust loading and the airflow with a cyclone up here as compared to disposable filter bags. Yeah, they... He wasn't originally going to make the bin clear. That was just for prototyping. And it's funny, like, you know, in the U.S. Filter Queen vacuums, there was always a clear dirt container available for demonstration. Why they didn't just make the thing have a clear dirt container altogether. But I guess that was... They really thought that you didn't want to have to see the dirt all the time. Maybe they misjudged the market. There's a big fold-out. The center fold of a DC-04. including some neat specifications here. These relate to the plastic molding. All visual faces to be gloss and free from all marks, including those caused by ejector pins, feed gates, and flashing. So when you mold the plastic, you have to tell them how good you want the molds, otherwise you'll get some pretty ugly looking plastic. And one of the first Dyson DC-07s to come to the United States um, came to my friend Tom Gasco in Missouri. And he was in contact with Dyson before they launched the product, and so he was able to acquire one. And the DC-07 that came to him had this brush roll housing with a very textured kind of look to it. It, was, it had lines, and he, he said, well, that's because it was a rapid prototype part. And nowadays, most of us know rapid prototyping by the name 3D printing. You might recognize that, the Amway Clear Track. Having trouble staying in focus. Sorry about that. Left is an example of how not to package a new piece of technology. That is true. That is true. Dyson had a very keen sense of how to make the thing look. Ignore the market research. Well, if you want to if you want to win big, you have to make a big gamble. <laughs> Posh House Magazine. It's an interesting little anecdote. Winston Churchill instructed anyone submitting a report to him to confine the length of their report to a single page. Oscar Wilde once apologized for writing a long letter by saying that if he had more time, he would have written a shorter one. 
That reminds me of a quote at the top of one of the pages of my Tuek stationary cleaner uh, engineer's manual from 1914, let's say. That should be another video. Uh, and the quote from, I think, Henry Ford was commenting on the Tuek, and he had a Tuek in his house. He said, the Tuek is simplicity itself. Simplicity is the greatest of engineering virtues. Okay, back to back to Dyson. Facts, facts, and more facts, not opinions. That's that's good. <laughs> Dear Mary, how can I enliven my dinner parties? Why not stimulate your guests on arrival with a demonstration of a Dyson vacuum cleaner? <laughs> well, I've been known to do that, but not with a Dyson. Yeah, there. This is interesting. This is good info. Once you're actually making money, what do you do? What should you do? That's James Dyson's signature handwriting. It's very distinctive. It's very architecty. This is interesting. This is not the case anymore. But in 1996, said customers deal direct. Well, no, this is still the case because you do still deal direct with Dyson. They have call centers and they have, um, I was referring to the courier service. This says if a problem can't be solved over the telephone, the Dyson courier service is alerted. Either a new machine arrives by courier at breakfast time the next day or the courier takes the machine back to Dyson. It is returned 24 hours later, repaired and valeted. Valeted? I feel like valeted would be the more British way to say it. Maybe somebody can clue me in. Yeah, now you take your Dyson to the to the Dyson store. It's kind of kind of like the Apple store. Except the dirt in your Apple products is more personal than the dirt in your Dyson products. Amway. Oh yeah, the clear track, that, that gray thing. This is the, the lawsuit. Hmm. Another interesting fold out here showing all these bags, cloth bag, bunch of paper bags. I tried to figure out what these bags were, most of them being UK. I wasn't able to get anywhere, but this and this look like Hoover bags. This looks like the collar on a Hoover, what's the constellation? Was that a Hoover style J? Did they even sell the Constellation in Great Britain? Britain's best-selling vacuum cleaners. Have faith. Trust in the public's judgment. There, that's... He's not naming the competitors, but look at that. It's amazing. I guess the overarching theme is taking a product that was so thoroughly commoditized by that time and decommoditizing it and giving people something to choose from that was different. You could argue whether it was that much better. I believe you could get your house just as clean with an old Hoover as you could with any Dyson. 
but it was different, betterly different, definitely better, or so it appeared. Maybe that was a little too broad of a statement about the old Hoover. Your mileage may vary. <laughs> I do like these little overlays. Very neat. Very cool designed book. At some point in this book, I think, I think his prior inventions are showcased. And those are interesting, too. He was always a guy that could take a look at something that was very ordinary and say, well, it would be better if we did it this way instead. More open-minded. Ninety-three. The first bagless vacuum cleaner manufactured under the Dyson name. So this was only three years after he started making Dyson-branded cleaners. All those weird, those canisters. In the USA, we know this as the Phantom Lightning. And that was another soured relationship between Dyson and Phantom. I would say based on the sales that Dyson has had in this country in the last 15 years, maybe Phantom messed up a little bit. But what do I know? They had a good run for a while. So to be a big success with a with an advanced product, you have to be super strong in marketing and in development and the you know basement tinkerers come up with many many brilliant ideas obviously many somewhat less brilliant ideas too but the marketing and of course the budget big risks you know Dyson mortgaged his house and there's a there's a blurb in the beginning of this book about he was off trying to sell his invention and his wife called to say the ceiling had caved in in their house <laughs> from a water leak. Terence Conran. I remember that um, the initial launch of the Dyson in the United States, which would have been the DC-07, occurred at the Terence Conran shop in New York City. It's a name I haven't heard since then. My biggest mistake came in the early 1970s when I was developing the ball barrow. Yeah, he had a wheelbarrow that had a ball instead of a wheel. Other people were putting in the cash. I assigned the patent to the company, which was a terrible mistake. I know now that one should license the company, but hold on to the patent. Otherwise, you lose control. And that reminds me of the story of Nikola Tesla which is another fascinating story. I've got several books on Tesla. And Tesla, for having invented some of the most prevalent and prolific electrical systems and devices in our time that are still used today, 
died broke because he was all invention and no business sense. He, he allowed George Westinghouse to uh, go back on a deal that would have made Tesla um, appropriately wealthy for his for his genius. But Westinghouse figured out that was going to cost him a lot of money. Oh, okay. Pictures. <laughs> so the early, the early things that Dyson developed, but that didn't have the Dyson name on them because he was attempting to just be the inventor. He wanted to stay in his basement and do the inventing and have somebody else do the dirty work. Only in the 90s did he figure out that that didn't work so well for him because he kept getting screwed by all these companies. And some of these vacuums we would recognize. The Iona, the Nova Dry Machine, we, the, the store that I started with in the early 2000s, they had sold several Nova Dries and they had sold a bunch of Phantoms, the original Phantom, this thing before it was even called the Thunder. And then Phantom went to infomercials and I remember the infomercials for the Fury on QVC all the time. That's a heck of a thing. Bagless Cyclonic Shop Back. Other products by James Dyson. Okay, this will be his prior stuff before he became a vacuum guy. It is infectious. The sea truck. Five hundred million as of ninety six. He was a young guy when he developed that. Water roller. Sarah, a friend of James and Deirdre Dyson, models the water roller outside the hardware shop. The trolley ball, the boat launcher. What would Freud say about the prevalence of balls in all these products? Does seem like a good design, doesn't it? <laughs> Interesting fact. Shipping goods to Japan is very cheap because container ships arrive from Japan with a full load and return almost empty. It costs less to send a vacuum cleaner to Japan than to deliver one to Scotland. Wow. I wonder if that's the case now with shipping things to China from the United States, let's say. All those containers, do they all go back full of something? Half the senior management are female, and the other half are male. How outdated. Okay, well here's the credit. We've reached the end. Cool book. And tucked in the back was a little bonus, the pamphlet on the DCO2, which was the Dyson canister vacuum cleaner designed to sit on a stair step, the bin tilted at an angle. For as much as the Phantom Lightning, I've, I've seen enough of those that they seem just sort of 
cheap and nasty and ordinary. I feel like this would be a neat machine to play with. Well, anyway, there's my my Dyson paraphernalia, and I hope you enjoyed me sharing it with you as much as I have. Enjoy your day.